episode 28 of The Downtown Dish. I am your host, Katie Schamberger. Won't you come in and have a seat at my Thanksgiving table? That's right, this week we are talking all things Thanksgiving here on The Downtown Dish to get you ready. My best friend, Jamie Young, you saw her in our Downtown Dish pumpkin tour. She stops back by. We are going to talk carry out, including for small groups. We are going to talk Thanksgiving cooking, Um, so where to get those ingredients, tips, and tricks. We're going to introduce you to the Downtown Dish Helpline. Yes, you will be able to call in and ask questions for future episodes. And we have a ton of special guests stopping by to help make your Thanksgiving celebration as wonderful as possible this year. We're going to chat with Derek Nooner. COO of Lifted Spirits, who's making one of my dreams come true. That's right, we're going to have a downtown dish cocktail, so stay tuned. We're also going to catch up with Chad Brewer, who is the manager of Underdog Wines Union Hill location. He's going to give us some tips on wine pairing. And Chantel Shannon, owner of Verdot Boutique in the Crossroads, is going to tell us what they have in store right now to help decorate your table and your home, flowers, uh, fresh fur wreaths and greenery, so much more. Big thanks this week and every week to our partners for helping to make the Downtown Dish happen. Downtown Council, KC Streetcar, Kansas City Downtown Neighborhood Association, and Lynchpin Ideas. episode of the downtown dish we are talking food and drink but let's talk decor Chantel Shannon the brains behind Verdant and also the founder of convivial productions is back with us you may have seen her a few weeks ago Chantel welcome back to the downtown dish so fun thank you so much for having me it looks like things at Verdant are just doing wonderfully and we are thrilled uh congratulations Thank you so much. It's been such a gift to be open and to start hosting and um, sharing different things that we love in the shop with our, our guests. Well, in case people have not had a chance to come by, um, one of the things that you specialize in and, you know, jump in anytime, but you've got yes. just incredible uh, fresh flowers, fresh yes. foliage. Any tips um, uh, how people can spruce up their own tables or and what they can find there in the shop to kind yeah. of help that process along. Absolutely. Okay, so we have so many fun things going on in the shop. First, we have ready-made everyday designer bouquets. And so those are the bouquets that we're always arranging in shop and that are always designed to fit with our bud vases. Okay. So we're going to have plenty of those for um, anyone to collect for their centerpieces or just bundles and bouquets they have around their home as they host, whether they are hosting um, guests or if they're just celebrating within their household. Mm -hmm. And then we also have bundles and swags. So bundles are curated um, flowers or greenery, such as eucalyptus. And those you can kind of pull apart once they're in your home, make your own arrangements or tablescapes. And then a swag is um, basically a bundle of greenery. So we have fir and pine together. And you hang those um, upside down, and so it's for decor and fragrance. But then you can also take them apart and make them into tablescape decor as well, or put them in front of your mantle or your front door. Um, And then another thing I forgot. I can smell it. It, Oh, my God. I've got to come get one of those. (laughs) Yes. The other thing I forgot is we also have wreaths. Um, So we got boxwood and fir wreaths, um, and those are ready to go for this weekend to decorate for Thanksgiving. Well, and remind us of Verdant's uh, shop hours, please. Yes, of course. Okay, so we actually have expanded our hours recently. We're open Tuesday through Friday, 11 to 7, which is so fun. And then Saturday, 9 to 5, as well as Sunday, 11 to 4. So Mondays are the only day we're closed at this time. Excellent. And again, everybody, you know, we're focusing on Thanksgiving, the meal, the experience. Um, But don't forget um, that Verdant has that incredible selection of cards and stationery. So maybe if you are missing (laughs) someone this year, can't be celebrating with with loved ones or friends, uh, maybe stop in and get them a card, send them a handwritten note, let them 
know that you're thinking of them and, you know, hopefully that you all can be together soon, but I just love, love everything happening over there. So sweet. Thank you so much. Yeah, we just got our poinsettia card in. So that's our holiday card this year, um, hand drawn from our um, botanical illustrator. And it's right at the front of the shop when you walk in. So you can snatch that and then you can write your holiday cards in shop or you can grab a pack of them and then write them at home. Perfect. Well, thank you for coming back with us. Yes. I'm sure maybe we can chat again. Yes, um, anytime. Holidays continue. We will uh, we'll be sharing more about our own downtown dish gift guide here within the next week. So mm -hmm. I, I can only guess that we will be happy to, to feature you. Uh, but Sweet. Chantel, thank you so much for stopping by. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Friends, I could not be more excited for an episode of The Downtown Dish. We are getting you ready for Thanksgiving. And I had to call on my best friend again. You saw her on the pumpkin tour. Jamie Young, events director of Kansas City Mom Collective, is back with us on the dish. Jamie, how are you? Good. How are you? Girl, I'm ready to eat. Oh, my gosh. It's the holiday season. I know. I'm so ready. I'm ready for Thanksgiving, that's for sure. Um, I don't know if anybody has picked up on this quite yet, uh, but we've got matching shirts. Yeah. And, uh... Yes, girl. Get it. Charlie Hustle. Thank you. There's a reason, well, many reasons that I wanted you part of the Thanksgiving show, but you and I have a, I think, an especially fun history tied to Thanksgiving. We do. We go way back to elementary school, but really like where Katie and Jamie became Katie and Jamie, it was when we were roommates down on the plaza, Sunset Apartments, 4821 Roanoke. We lived down there for about three years, yep. right? Yep. Three years. And we just had an amazing time down there. But one thing that we were known for was our plaza lighting Thanksgiving night parties. It was, yes. <laughs> we always had a blast. And I miss those. Like Katie and I jokingly say that there will come a time when we are going to be so independently wealthy that we are just going to be able to get that apartment again yeah. and just have it for the holidays so yep. that we can do our parties again. <laughs> so we're going to, you know, we're going to kind of break it down the week before Thanksgiving, where we are. This is the perfect mm -hmm. time to do that prep, make your lists, place your online orders, um, whether you're getting carry out food, maybe you're ordering groceries. Mm -hmm. um, Jamie, how's your prep going so far? What? What? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, we're, we're about there. We're about there. No, I honestly, I'm just kind of really starting to think about it because, you know, in years past, I always hosted my mom's side of the family. We are a big Irish Catholic family, lots of people. So every Thanksgiving, I spent, you know, hosting probably 30, 35 people in my wow. house. And that is not <laughs> happening this year. Um, it's just going to be my family of five and my dad. Um, so just six of us. You know, and the, to take it from one extreme down to this, I mean, I'm really thinking, like, how am I going to make this work? Because let's be honest, too, I have picky family members. I have people who don't really love turkey. Oh, God. And, you know, like, ah. I know. I know. Ah. I know. Ah. I mean, like, I think, so I'm just thinking of new ways of, like, cutting it down, ordering, you know, different sides. Because I still want turkey. Oh, but yeah. we don't need the full turkey for the three of us that are going to eat it. Um, so yeah, so it's definitely starting to come to mind and I've, I've started to write down. Cause I think too, one of the things that I'm really striving to do this year with my family, since it is smaller is I want to make sure everyone gets the things that they really love. Uh, let's talk about our carry outside first, yes. which uh, kudos again, not just to downtown Kansas city restaurants, but restaurants all over. I cannot remember, uh, seeing a selection this huge. And so <laughs> We don't have time here on this week's show to go through all the options, but we wanted to call out a few and we want to make sure that you are following us on Twitter and Instagram at Downtown Dish KC because we are going to put together uh, more extensive lists in easy to save format. So whether you want some carry out, whether you want to cook, whether you want a little bit of both, mm -hmm. we are going to strive to be your resource. But 
I wanted to, uh, in the spirit of the Butterball Turkey Hotline, I wanted to uh, open up our own Downtown Dish Thanksgiving Hotline. Yes. And our good friends on Twitter, at Downtown KC, asked if we could highlight some carryout options for one to two people because they're seeing a lot of kind of in the four, six, eight, ten range. And Jamie, like you just said, lots of groups are scaling back. Um, I know here in my household, it's just me and Rob, so so we'll have two. Um, I got to tell you, there's some really good options, but at the very top of the list, Succotash is killing it. Mm -hmm. You can get an individual dinner and they give you the option to customize. So you get to pick your main, you get to pick three sides, then it comes with either a dinner roll, gluten-free biscuit, and you get some cranberry sauce. Now, Succotash, if you have any kind of dietary restrictions, or um, I don't even wanna say restrictions, um, dietary considerations, mm -hmm. vegetarian, vegan, keto, they, can, they have options for all of that. So incredible assortment. They also have a ton of side items. So Jamie, you said maybe you, you know, kind of wanted to mix that up a little bit. They've got their small sides serve about two to three people. Then they've got large sides for four to six. Um, everything from just your good old fashioned buttery mashed potatoes to vegan buttery mashed potatoes to mashed cauliflower. Delicious. I know. That's awesome. So good. I want to also shout out a, a good friend of the dish, our friends at Affair. Of course, are not, you know, pulling out all the stops for their Thanksgiving dinner. Um, here's, you know, the menu. I mean, it's it's oh huge. Um, you basically, and again, they have options, so you get a starter, you can choose a main course, um, you choose your side, they have a dessert add-on, um, you can also then add on a wine flight, which I think would be just delightful, but they have a per person charge, um, a per person per adult and per child. This is a great option too if you do have I don't understand these people, but if you have some turkey haters, <laughs> it's like pumpkin haters. Who are you? Now, I will say my grandma, she's not doing turkey this year. What's Gladys doing? She's getting carry out. Because she's um, like, you know, she doesn't hate turkey, but she's like, eh, take it or leave it. And so they're doing carry out. So pork chops, I think she said she's going to do. And so, you know, to each their own, right? <laughs> well, and I was looking at a fair. So they have your turkey option, a uh, sage roasted farm turkey. Yum. But they've oh. also got prime rib or salmon. And Jamie, that's a great point, too. Maybe your Thanksgiving plans look a lot different this year. You said you already want to have each family member's kind of favorite dish. Yeah. Friends, do that for yourselves. We, yeah. We're definitely kind of focusing on the more traditional Thanksgiving meal, your turkey, your sides, your dessert. But decide what you love and then treat yourself, right? Like, Yeah, I think if 2020 has taught us anything, it is that focus on yourself. Do what makes you happy, what brings you joy. I mean, my Christmas tree is already up. Oh, yeah, girl. And, I, and I'm an early decorator, but not this early. But because it brings me joy. So if salmon on Thanksgiving is your jam, do it. Do it. You know, pork chops, Grandma, do it. Do it. Because 2020, you should be eating well no matter what you're eating. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. I love that. Let me just call out a couple other carryout options. Now, these tend to be for kind of that slightly larger group range. Your four, four to six. Um our friends at Harvey's at Union Station have some delicious options for groups size 6 or 10. Um, but definitely check out um, our friends at the Downtown Marriott. Their a la carte restaurant service is going to have Thanksgiving option uh, for four people. Let's see, the Belfry, Brown and Low, Pierpont's. I mean, just incredible. And Jamie, we got to talk about a couple other options too, because I know you and I love to have kind of a special Thanksgiving breakfast yes. to prepare. Yeah. 
Yeah. The stomach. Oh my goodness. Well, I, I mean, every Thanksgiving since I've been a mom, for sure, I get up. Sometimes I do a 5K, sometimes. <laughs> That's for the day. So I'm going to definitely at least try to get out and go for a walk. But then I come home and make a good solid breakfast while we watch the parade on TV. And I think it just gives a good base for the day. My kids will usually still have a little bit of lunch, but not me. Okay. I have a breakfast and then I save up some room because I have always said, <laughs> if I ever did anything and I had to have a last meal. <laughs> It would be Thanksgiving dinner yes. with all the fixings. Cause I mean, that is my jam. Yes. So I, I get prepared. I, I prepare the stomach. I'm like, what's that? Joey chestnut. I yes. Just, I prepare that stomach. <laughs> Girl, you need, you need to be eating uh, lettuce right now. Like heads well, of lettuce. For many stretch, reasons. stretch that stomach out. <laughs> for many reasons I should be eating lettuce. But let's just say it's to prepare the stomach for Thanksgiving. Well, so you'll know this place from our pumpkin tour a few weeks ago, but Seven Swans Creperie has unveiled some delicious um, quiches that you can pre-order and pick up for Thanksgiving breakfast. Uh, mm -hmm. They do have a tart as well um, for kind of more of a dessert option. But speaking of the, uh, the carbs and the sweets... Definitely one of I know. <laughs> oh, it's just carbs and sweets. Say it again. Carbs and sweets. Carbs and sweets. Oh, that's really just. I just want like a pie buffet. Um, play a few places for your radar. Bloom Baking Company. Now, let me circle back. If you've got that small group, you've got one one person, two people. Our friends at Bloom have got you in mind. They have an assortment of pies, but you can choose a full-size pie um, or a mini-size pie that serves two people. So perfect. They also have an assortment of bread. Um, they've got some other options like a stuffing kit, and we're going to talk about what you need to do with that stuffing kit here in the next segment. But Farmhouse, our friends at Farmhouse have an assortment of breads and pies for $20 each. Don't know if you saw that Jay Rieger Distillery this week unveiled their Boozy Bakery. So they've got some baked goods with some Jay Rieger spirits. I think the Amaro uh, coffee liqueur features pretty prominently. Delicious. And then, um, yeah, our friends at, at Seven Swans, um, those quiches and, and a tart. So just an incredible Mm -hmm. And I know, I know we're still missing people, but yeah. just again, kudos to all of these restaurants that are working so hard to make these options available. It's really tremendous. It's amazing. It's amazing for sure. Jamie, let's, uh, we've got a couple Thanksgiving debates that have crossed my radar. So before we, before we end this first segment, what are your thoughts on cranberry sauce? Canned? or fresh? I will say, I'm not, I don't hate cranberry sauce. It's a take it or leave it thing for me, but fresh all the way. Okay. I think because I've had very good cranberry sauces. I mean, I, I, one of my favorite food moments was with a cranberry sauce, but then once you have something so good, it's hard to live up to, you know, that, um, but definitely fresh. I can't do canned. Okay. Well, I don't know. I can do canned all day. Give me those jiggly jelly slices of cranberry and a spoon. Um, I don't know. Jiggly jelly, what? Jiggly jelly, jiggly jelly cranberry slices. Um, I feel like actually my favorite is kind of a is kind of a hybrid between canned and fresh because I personally every single year go see uh, my friends at Williams Sonoma and I get their jarred um, cranberry sauce that they make with apples, orange, and cinnamon. And it is incredible. That sounds good. That sounds really, really good. So it's, I don't have to make anything, but to me it has the, the texture and the flavors of the fresh and it's mm -hmm. just, it's unbeatable. That sounds amazing. That sounds so good. Well, Jamie, I think we need to like get a snack. I mean, I'm getting hungry. All right. I'm starving. 
something. Um, and we're going to come back here in just a couple minutes because then we're going to talk about, we're going to help out all of our friends out there who might be cooking. Oof. That's you and me. I know. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> All right. Well, Jamie, thank you so much. We'll be back with you all here in just a moment on the Downtown Dish. Well, we can't have a Thanksgiving feast, carry out, cooking, otherwise, whatever you're doing without some wine. And Chad Brewer, manager of Underdog Union Hill, has stopped by to tell us about the world of Thanksgiving and wine pairings. Chad, welcome to the Downtown Dish. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad uh, that you're here because that means I can uh, drink some wine while we chat. Absolutely. Me cheers, too. Cheers, friend. Um, how do, I, you know, any tips just to, to help people um, kind of start thinking about how to pair what they're eating with wine? You know, uh, whenever it comes to wine pairings as a whole, I always like, you know, to keep it the KISS method, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Yes. Uh, and, you know, the one of the best things that I can say about pairing um, wine is the weight of the dish and the weight of the wine. So, you know, if you're going to be having, you know, traditional turkey um, and traditional fixings, mm -hmm. you know, a light red or a kind of full bodied white um, would be fantastic. If you're doing something a little bit heavier, maybe like a prime rib, uh, then you would want to match a wine that would have the same weight. So we're looking at like all the Shiraz or California Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, so those are the, the fast tips. Excellent. Um, see here, you know, everything's going to look a little different. Right. Um, we're probably going to get it back to the basics, maybe a little bit smaller, not quite the vast quantity of food that maybe we would have normally. Um, so I think, you know, really try to hit those uh, classic wines uh, that just work. You know, uh, tomorrow happens to be Beaujolais Nouveau Day. That's right. And the classic pairing with uh, Thanksgiving is Beaujolais Nouveau. Okay. And I haven't tried that yet. You know, do, you, do you sell that there in the shop? It, it, it internationally goes on sale tomorrow. Okay. Uh, it, it is tomorrow is the day, and it's a light-bodied red wine. Mm -hmm. um, I, I may or may not have opened a bottle for my special uh, sneak peek. You're sneaky. Um, yeah, you know, you, you, you got to taste it Perks for the Perks of the job. Right? Perks of the job. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a tough life. Um, but one of the things that, uh, you know, Beaujolais works so well with turkey and all the fixings because it, it has some nice acidity. Uh, but it's not overpowering. You know, it's just easy drinking. It's a casual wine. It's got really nice round red fruit character, mm -hmm. um, almost bright and bubbly. Uh, so it Excellent. works with turkey and white meats and things like that. So maybe you're doing fish. That'll work too. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to also uh, just just be nice with, you know, those kind of uh, potatoes or, or yams and all that kind of thing. It just is a really nice a uh, mobile wine that can work with lots of things. Well, uh, and, and go ahead. Yeah, and I'm liking the sound of that because, and I'm also thinking about our friends out there, maybe um, our vegetarian and our vegan friends. Um, earlier in this episode, we uh, kind of broke down the Thanksgiving carryout menu over at Succotash, and they are just killing it. Absolutely. You know, um, I, I actually, one of my most favorite pairings of all time was doing a, a dinner all vegetarian uh, dinner and we had this huge array of wines and the wines were vegetarian too. Um, most of the Beaujolais that I'm going to have in the store is going to be organic and biodynamic so they tick off that uh, vegetarian box and then also I've got plenty of other wines um, from Europe uh, that have a little bit more earthiness to them mm -hmm. that would go really great with some of those um, vegetarian dishes mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of give a little bit more of a kind of a boost, so to speak. Uh, and they're uh, vegetarian and vegan friendly as well. Awesome. Well, and I have to ask what you think. So um, I, I told you off camera that I am a, a very frequent shopper over at Crestwood. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. Um, and he kindly, uh, 
intro me to you, but we got to talking the other day and he said that last year, one of their big sellers around this time in the Crestwood location, and it happens to be one of my, I think it's my current favorite wine is the Union Sacre Gewürztraminer. And I think it's yeah. hitting that white wine that you mentioned where it's got enough of a body that like genuine floral Gewürztraminer. I mean, I could just drink that all day. Absolutely. Those aromatic white wines, Gewürztraminer, um, Mueller Thurgau, Vignet, um, uh, Riesling, mm-hmm. all of those like really aromatic whites, you know, uh, work so well with traditional Thanksgiving food as well as bubbles, you know. If you have any doubts about what to do, just grab a bottle of bubbles and it'll just work perfectly. So I can hear um, a good friend of the dish and a good friend of mine, uh, Jen, who is a bubbles enthusiast. I can hear her cheering. And honestly, I've really tried to get um, I try to keep some on hand and try to kind of break that mold of where, you know, it's fabulous to have bubbles or anything you love when you're celebrating, but you don't need to only have them you know, when you're celebrating, they're great anytime. Absolutely. Bubbles are great with almost all food from super expensive caviar. I mean, I've, I've had it with a bologna sandwich and it's just <laughs> as good in my opinion. Everybody oh. definitely go check out Underdog Union Hill and Chad, happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And I hope you have a safe, wonderful time. And decision, married with a lack of vision. All right, we're back. Jamie Young, events director of Kansas City Mom Collective and fellow Thanksgiving enthusiast. Yes. Back with us for segment two of the Downtown Dish, and we're going to talk about cooking the Thanksgiving meal. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you are facing this situation because our own Street Cardana Mm -hmm. um, is is encountering a similar Mm -hmm. thing where she is going to have her kiddos with her this year and is going to cook the full meal for the, I think she said the first time ever. Yeah. It'll be so, my first time ever. Okay. So I'm feeling like people like I have personally been cooking and hosting, um, for the last few years. It is my very favorite meal to cook. I have had my fair share of disasters. Shout out to years and years ago when we had a big family gap. Oh, you know what I'm going to say. I uh, had a big family family gathering in my hometown of Columbia, Missouri uh, with my dad and stepmom and my Z um, and had had uh, aunts and uncles that we didn't normally see so it felt extra special and everybody has this delicious meal and we go to eat the pumpkin pie that I made for dessert. <laughs> I forgot the effing sugar in the pie. <laughs> Let me tell you about you don't want to eat pumpkin pie that doesn't no. have sugar. No. I always picture that scene when you tell that story, that scene from Christmas Vacation where they're all eating the turkey and they're like, mm. yeah. <laughs> because I'm sure everyone was like, don't make Katie upset. She tried really hard. But, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. Jamie, let's uh, let's check in with our Downtown Dish helpline because I think uh, our friend Jen Dancer is checking in with a question. Hey, Downtown Dish. I hope you can help me out. I've been listening to Mayor Lucas and other medical professionals in our community and made the really hard decision to not be with my family for Thanksgiving. So now I have about a week to plan my own Thanksgiving meal, and I'm really not interested in making every dish on my own. Do you have suggestions that might help in a pinch? Sorry that um, it does hurt my heart that so many people, uh, myself included, cannot be with their families as they would want, but I do want to send my heartfelt thank you to everyone who is putting safety first If you have found maybe your plans have shifted toward the last minute or you're in Jamie or Donna's boat and you're cooking, we wanted to give you some delicious options um, on that side of the table. (laughs) I'm so funny. Um, 
We can't, I mean, we got to start with our friends at Local Pig. We had Alex Pope on a few weeks ago, but they still have that Thanksgiving ordering. I just cannot recommend their turkeys enough. Mm -hmm. Remember that you can get a full-size bird in different weight ranges. You can get that half turkey, um, which is, you know, they'll cut that bird in half. Great option for a smaller group. Jamie, I think you and I are both going the turkey breast Mm -hmm. And and so the yeah. but the turkey breast, I mean you could either do one or maybe two. Um just incredible. Again, I like to brine mine. And the great thing about local pig is when you pick your bird, you can pick if you want any kind of finishes on it. So they can pre-brine it for you, they can dry rub it for you, um, or you can just get the plain bird you can add on a brining kit which is what i do it's got all that salt and garlic and fresh herbs and you just combine it with water and let that turkey just take a bath in your fridge overnight so get on there order check out your order you again you can place your order online with local pig you can schedule your pickup so all you have to do is just run in um you know grab your grab your stuff head out don't forget they've got lots of other deliciousness, um, lots of other meats. Um, I know Jen, I think, is kind of thinking about she might go a ham or a brisket route for Thanksgiving, which, again, Jamie, we were talking last time, eat what you want. Yeah, you do you, for you sure. You do you. Eat, eat whatever you want. Um, they've got the local pig has those great farm eggs. So, again, to, if you want to whip up a Thanksgiving breakfast, all sorts of sauces, cheeses, cocktail syrups, just lots of stuff going on there. And of course, when you visit Local Pig, you're already right there in City Market. Great spot to stop and get your produce, get a big old bag of potatoes, um, get your veggies. Yes. I mean, Jamie, I know you're a long time City Market shopper. Just an incredible selection there. Oh, I, I love the City Market. Everything's so fresh down there and delicious and it's it's perfect. Jamie, what are you, I know you've, you're a little nervous about Thanksgiving, and I know it's going to go beautifully. Um, what are you most excited to cook, or what, what's your favorite part of the meal to make? Well, I will say, so I said earlier that I was in charge of mashed potatoes. That was always, even though I host for 35 in my house, the only thing I had to make was mashed potatoes, and, but a lot of them. And so I have a recipe that I just love. Um, it's always funny, like going to the grocery store before Thanksgiving, I'm almost embarrassed by the amount of cream cheese bricks in my, um, in my cart and butter bricks. You know, I'm just like over there, like grabbing, all the, <laughs> grabbing all the cream cheese, like nothing to see here, but we use a lot of butter and cream cheese for our Thanksgiving feast, which, you know, is delish, but, um, but so yes, I will still be making the same mashed potatoes I do every year, um, just scaling it way down. And um, I make cream corn for my husband. It's his like one family tradition. It's a very difficult recipe. It's corn, butter, and cream cheese. Oh. It's really, really hard. But you let that sit in a crock pot. <laughs> and that, and I, I might need to try that because I have always loved canned cream corn, but I have never made it. Oh, yeah. Like fresh. You know, like the frozen corn, like a good yeah. frozen corn, a brick of cream cheese, and a stick of butter. It's very healthy. And then you just multiply that little concoction by however you know much you need. Salt and pepper, it's, I mean, it's very complicated. Jen, I would say to you and to everybody else that's kind of unsure about cooking, you know, decide too, is there something you want to cook? Mm -hmm. um, and there's something that you want to get carry out. And then you could do both and kind of spread that support of local businesses around even more. Um, I think that's a tremendous option. Um, wanted to shout out a couple other options. If you are preparing to cook and you realize that maybe you need um, a kitchen gadget or something, do not forget about our friends also right there in the City Market area at Index Restaurant Supply. Maybe keep your eyes peeled. My secret to mashed potatoes is I use a ricer. And so I boil the potatoes and then put them through a ricer and they are fluffy and heavenly and... We actually took a Thanksgiving side dish class once together. And that was where we discovered... We did. 
Because I did. myself have a ricer. I don't I do not do the ricer for the big batches of mashed potatoes that I do, but this might be a year to pull out the ricer because it. I did that the first year, and I was just, like, cranking the potatoes nonstop. I'm like, we're going to have to think of something else. Okay, so in a, in a non-pandemic year, if you're making mashed potatoes for, like you said, around 30, 35 people, how many pounds of potatoes do you start with? I mean, 97 pounds. <laughs> See, that's the thing. That's, that was a little exaggeration. Okay. The thing is, <laughs> with potatoes, I mean, for the most part, everyone eats mashed potatoes, like at least at my family function. So I always make way more than I probably need. And actually, one of the things that I'm going to miss the most this year is every year, the day before Thanksgiving, the night before Thanksgiving, a few of my cousins come over and we actually put all the mashed potatoes together, like put the whole, you know, all the pans together, together, um, because I need help. We have so many potatoes to peel and we have just made oh it my God. tradition. And um, last year, my cousin Sarah even made us homemade shirts that said, let's get mashed. And then I it love happened. it. Um, so that that tradition will not be happening this year because we want to keep everyone safe. But I look forward to the day where we can do that again because we always have so much fun laughing and a few libations, you know, yes. preparing for the holiday. And then we have these huge batches of mashed potatoes that just have to go in the oven the next day so good that is a great tip so for for all of you who are cooking and i kind of learned this the hard way over the years but definitely you know try to space that out i think an advantage to having smaller groups this year is i'm feeling like people are not necessarily going to be on those kind of hard and fast timelines oh we have a house full of people coming over we need to be ready to go at four o'clock or five o'clock or eleven o'clock whatever um, so I feel like everybody might enjoy a more relaxed pace, but that said, I tend to make, um, my desserts and I do not make gravy from the turkey. I, again, uh, turn to my friends at Williams Sonoma for their incredible jarred gravy bases, but I make the gravy and desserts, uh, the day before. And they just hang out in the fridge and that way that cuts down a little bit on what I'm actually cooking. And again, going with the turkey breast, it cooks way faster. Let me put a couple more places on the radar. Our friends at Howard's Grocery, wonderful produce selection there um, and some other yummies you can again order online and then just go and, and pick up your order. Don't forget about the pairing. I know we talk about them a lot, but such a wonderful local business. Great neighbor in the crossroads. Um, if you're looking for those kind of specialty items, maybe you want to bake something special. You want to whip up a charcuterie board or some che a cheese plate. Um, they really have it all. They have a really astounding selection especially in that smaller space and it has been expertly curated by Matt and Jeff and that whole team at the pairing of course you can get your wine your spirits your beer um, everything like that and then you know if you want some other options maybe you want to uh, go head to head with my nemesis on Thanksgiving which is homemade rolls <laughs> You guys, it is, so I, I used, uh, Jamie's husband, Andy, has an incredible recipe. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happens. Some years they are amazing. You could have bought them in the store. Mm -hmm. Some years they don't rise yeah. and they're like little, uh, carbohydrate hockey pucks. <laughs> it's amazing what humidity will do to a meal. Or, I know. I, I even I used to be a barista, and like if it was a humid day, you couldn't even pull a good shot of espresso. Like it's amazing what oh. outdoor you know elements can affect all those kind of things. Well, and at least right now, you know we'll, we'll see. But Thanksgiving's looking pretty nice. I'm yeah. thinking it's going to be a windows open Thanksgiving, 60 mm -hmm. degrees. Um, if you want to, you know, try your hand at that. Uh, Check out Ibis Bakery there with Messenger Coffee. Um, they have bread flour, 
Also, don't forget about the Belfry. Uh, they've got some delicious options. Again, they have Thanksgiving carryout and desserts. But also take a look at their batch kitchen because they have pre-bagged flour. Mm -hmm. They've got nuts, some different cheeses, and then house-made sauces and uh, salad dressings. Mm -hmm. So again, that could be an option too. Um, maybe, you know, look at some ways that you can add a little flair, a little extra flavor to your table without a ton of work, you know, maybe whip up a salad and get, you know, a locally made dressing to put on top. You don't necessarily, Jamie, we can't, I know you're tired of hearing about these, but I cannot talk about cooking your own Thanksgiving without the star of my meal. Mm -hmm. And people freak out every year. But so remember when we said that Bloom Baking has a pre-prepared stuffing kit with all your crusty stale bread and your seasonings. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to get that or get, get whatever. Um, make your own stuffing recipe. We actually use... Um, uh, my mother-in-law, Dee, uh, always brings a family recipe every year. But you take that stuffing mix, don't cook it, don't bake it, don't put it in the bird. Instead, scoop it in your waffle iron, stuffing waffles, it'll change your life. I'm serious. It's everything that the people who like the crusty edges of the stuffing, it's like that times a thousand. <laughs> and then you can decide how you want to eat them. I personally am a stacker. I like to put my stuffing waffle on the plate and just turkey, potatoes, gravy, a little cranberry on top. Uh, Rob likes to kind of keep everything separate and kind of eat around the plate. But it's, it is great for leftovers because you just put that, you know, put that stuffing mix right back in your fridge. And as you eat leftovers, make fresh stuffing waffles. Um, I, this is a no judgment zone here on the downtown dish. So as, as the Thanksgiving cook, I am in charge of the kitchen. I like enough leftovers for a minimum minimum three days ideally five i want to eat it like almost a week Is jamie it, what do you think about leftovers yeah it's always a sad day to me when i've officially hit that point where either like part of the leftovers are gone or like we've we've gone enough days now it's always sad it's like you can hear sarah mclaughlin in the background singing i will remember you and be like either eat the last morsel or or throw the last part down the disposal it's like oh heartbreak <laughs> in case anyone's interested uh give me a follow on instagram at katie writes i am actually going to go live on thanksgiving day just for a few minutes and show you the magic of stuffing waffles Fine. firsthand but you you won't regret it green bean casserole are you a fan first of all i am not a fan okay but my family members are so okay. it will be i will be making it this year yes I um, I have a, a long and troubled history with green beans, but I have come around. That's another uh, mother-in-law recipe that, that she brings over. But it's come to my attention that some people out there make their green bean casserole with Velveeta instead of cream of mushroom soup. What do you think about this? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. No, no. That, to me... I can't, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> and I'm not a green bean casserole fan, but I would eat a, you know, a classic green bean casserole all day. No, I can't see it. Mm -mm. Um, I know that Jared Campbell, one of our founding members of the Downtown Dish team, hi Jared and his wife Katie, hi guys, um, her family is a Velveeta green bean casserole. They are very passionate about it. Um, he claims that he's going to make a little bit for me. He's, I'm going to try it, and he's going to bring me around. But I don't see it. I mean, I don't see it. Forward to 2021 downtown dish, and you'll be like, this is where it's at: stuffing waffles and Velveeta green bean casserole. <laughs> Just mar mark it in your calendar, guys. Okay. Come back next year and see what Katie has to say. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that everybody out there, I hope we've given you some great ideas both for carryout and for cooking. Bottom line is this, 
try to have fun this year. Do what you want to do. Do what makes you happy. Eat what you love. But Jamie, I really hope your Thanksgiving meal is delicious. I know it will be. Thank you. You too. I might and, just come over for, you know, tell me what time you're going live and I'll be there for your stuffing waffles. Okay. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can chuck them. I'll be six feet away. You can just throw them like a frisbee. Just kind of like jog by the house. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll frisbee throw it and just arr, catch it in your teeth. I'll, I'm not above it. I'm not above it. <laughs> well, thank well, you so much, Katie. Thank you, Jamie. Happy Thanksgiving Happy to you and your family. Everybody wants to Okay, we're doing it all things Thanksgiving this week on the Downtown Dish, and I think we've come to my favorite part of the episode. We're talking cocktails with, with Derek Nooner, Chief Operating Officer at Lifted Spirits. Derek, welcome to the Downtown Dish. Hello. Hey, thank you for having me. So, Derek, help us out. We've got so many great options. You all have so many great options. Thank you, first of all, for all of your creative cocktail kits, everything you guys have been doing the last several months. Kudos to you and the team there. Oh, thanks. What are, what are, what are we drinking for Thanksgiving? How do, how do we even navigate what our delicious options are? Sure, sure. I mean, like, you know, this time of year, you kind of naturally slide into drinking whiskey. I mean, it's, it's kind of a warm weather spirit. Um, and, you know, it works really well with all sorts of different things, whether you're going, you know, you're making a punch, uh, which is always an easy communal thing to do, especially when you're sharing with family. Um, but I always like to push the boundaries a little bit. And, and I think, you know, one of my favorite spirits year round, but um, is, is definitely gin. And that's something Same. we do a lot yes. of. Um, we love gin here, Lifted Spirits. Uh, we make a couple different kinds. Uh, we've got our bright gin, which is kind of like gentle and and soft and kind of citrusy. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a bold gin, which is a little more exotic and like uh, it, it kind of it, it's in the name. It's bold and it kind of packs a little bit of a punch. A little higher ABV, um, a little uh, more exotic. I, I said that already, but yeah, it, it's a very exotic gin. It's a fun one. I love it. So when you think about like fall flavors, you kind of think of a lot of like baking spices. You think yep. you know your cinnamon, your allspice, your clove. Well, it just so happens that gin is made out of a lot of those similar botanicals. Perfect. And so, you know, people don't normally think to go gin whenever you're talking about like an autumnal kind of cocktail. But why not? It works with a lot of different things. Um, so what I would I my current sipper right now and actually we've got it in our uh, cocktail kits on our website. OK. And we're also selling in our, our, our tasting room. But it is a, a drink that we came up with. It's it's bold gin, mm -hmm. and it's got some uh, apple cider from Lewisburg Cider Mill, a uh, little bit of lemon juice, and um, it spread some absinthe on top, actually. So weirdly, I mean, not what? weirdly, it's a thing. Yeah, so like one of the um, the cool thing is, is, you know, apple and all those same baking spices you get from like apple cider, you find with some of the exotic peppercorns that we use in our in our gin uh -huh. and it, it's obviously a lighter way to do it so you know the juniper kind of rounds it out and then believe it or not just a little spritz of absinthe on top and it is it's the aroma is full and then you get a lot of the uh, apple cider that comes through uh, obviously with the with the cocktail and it, it works really really well um derek let me ask you because we've you know we've taken some viewer questions in this episode we know that people are facing lots of different things this thanksgiving plans are looking a lot different we're seeing a lot of small groups a lot of paired down groups some people are a little stressed out because maybe they're cooking more than they used to they're cooking the full meal where you know other years they would just bring maybe a side or two so let's just go with the gin we've got yeah. that gorgeous lifted spirits gin any recommendations on on just something easy that people could put together, um, a gin cocktail? So what you can do is instead of just adding a little bit of sugar in like a like a basic simple syrup, you can do let's say like a clove simple syrup. So oh, you take it'd be yes. really easy to do. Um, now people are often mystified by what simple syrups really are, and it's the thing is it's it's meant to be simple. It's a very simple way to include sugar into your cocktail in liquid form to make it balance with the acid of the citrus. Right, okay. So don't overthink it, doesn't need to be, bring it to a boil, anything like that. All you want to do is have that sugar be dissolved into water. And you want to do it at about equal parts. Okay. That's what I was thinking, equal parts. And that's great, because you could, yeah. you know, 
even whip up a batch this weekend, um, you know, put it in a sealed container, have it on hand in the fridge. I think it'll it'll keep it'll for a few long. days. It'll, okay. it'll last, simple syrup can last months and months okay. depending on how you keep it. Yeah. What I do at home is actually use a blender. I don't even add heat to my simple syrups. I just put, oh. say, a cup of water and a cup of sugar, put it in a blender, and it's after like 10 seconds in a blender, you're done. Awesome. So you don't have to, it's way easier. Uh, sometimes if you just take a, like an empty water bottle and fill it with a little bit of uh, sugar, a little bit of hot water, and you just shake it, uh-huh. you've got simple syrup. It's really easy. And if you do it that way, it's really easy to incorporate other flavors that you'd like to add in. So, for instance, let's take that, that gimlet that we are just talking about. Yep. You could easily introduce, put like, I don't know, a teaspoon of cloves into your mixture of water and uh, sugar uh-huh. and shake it and you'll have a flavored simple syrup that you can use in cocktails and it's that easy you don't it doesn't require boiling a pot and making sure it's you know sitting for this long and this long uh, it's very simple you're just incorporating sugar Derek thank you so much for stopping by keep us in mind as we get closer to more holidays um, we're doing all kinds of stuff here at the dish gift spotlights more kind of at home entertaining um really just trying to help people have as as wonderful of a holiday as they can so happy thanksgiving to you and yours and thank you for being with us yes thank you Katie. i appreciate it thank you so much cocktail magic happening before our eyes with Derek of Lifted Spirits when he was like, oh, I'm going to throw out this cocktail recipe. Well, Derek has so kindly agreed to let us here at the Downtown Dish make that our first official Downtown Dish cocktail. We would like to introduce you to the Crossroads Clove. It's a delightful fall take on a gimlet. All you need three ingredients, gin, clove, simple syrup, and fresh lime. You combine those, shake them with ice, then strain that into a coupe or to a preferred glass and enjoy those fall flavors. So delicious. Definitely send us a picture at Downtown Dish KC when you are making your own Crossroads Clove and we'll drink to that. All you have to do now is decide how you're going to celebrate Thanksgiving, what delicious things you are going to eat and drink. We hope that we have given you plenty of inspiration here on this week's Downtown Dish. Special note, if you are thinking about that Thanksgiving carryout, definitely check in with restaurants sooner rather than later. We are seeing some order deadlines pop up as soon as Friday the 20th. So definitely check that out and get your orders in. And don't forget, come back with us next week. That's right, we are gonna come to you on Thanksgiving with a new episode getting you ready for all things Small Business Saturday in downtown Kansas City. We're gonna look at some local gift markets and some shopping events. We're also gonna check in with beloved annual holiday events like the mayor's Christmas tree lighting, decorations at Union Station. The tree is up and lit at Power and Lights, PNC Plaza, festive things going on at the city market. So we've got lots to share. Digest your Thanksgiving meal, then come back, hang out with us. We will tell you how to spend that weekend right after Thanksgiving, how you can support local businesses. From our table to yours, have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. We'll see you back here next week on the Downtown Dish.